Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Eli Diobity Tech. This video is, is going to be based on a P015D O2 sensor delay response, lean to rich, bank 2, sensor 1. So the keywords, it's lean to rich. Supposedly it's, it's a de delay response. This is a 2014 GMC Yukon with the 5.3 liter engine. Just from experience, from um, working on these GM vehicles, most likely the cause is going to be a, a lazy O2 sensor that's not have a quick or a fast switch from lean to rich. So it's staying more in the lean side than the rich. So it all depends whether it's in under load or idle. I'm not sure if this vehicle detected uh, detected this symptom or this condition under, under load or idle. So the best thing to do is to go under freeze frame data to see at what point this code was set. So here we go. Absolute low value shows about 9.4. Perhaps it was under load. Proposition about 18.4%. So I'm looking for RPM. So happened at 1357. Does it have speed at, at one miles per hour? So let me see. So this happened at almost 61 miles per hour. So it was under load at 1357 RPMs. Okay, so that's a key key point right there. It happened under load. Now another area you know where you could check to see under mode six. Pretty much you'll you you'll select the exhaust gas sensor monitor, bank two sensor one. But but before I go there, I'm gonna check bank one sensor one just to uh, have some comparisons between both of them, the upstream all two sensors. All right, so from rich to lean sensor threshold voltage, as you can see, it was a pass, 450 out of 450. A lean to rich sensor threshold voltage, 450 out of 450. Low sensor voltage for switch time calculation, 300 out of 300. High sensor voltage for switch time calculation, 600 out of 600. Rich to lean sensor switch time, 32 out of 120. That's good. Lean to rich sensor switch time, 28 of 28 out of 120. Also good. Now test ID 91. Our test value was negative 31 out of positive 425. Test ID 92. Test value was negative 65 out of positive 425. Okay, which that's the last PID. Let me go back. I'm gonna select bank two sensor one now. So rich to lean sensor threshold voltage, 450 out of 450. That's good. Lean to rich sensor threshold voltage, 450 out of 450. Low sensor voltage for switch time calculation, 300 out of 300. High sensor voltage for switch time calculation, 600, 600, so far good, same as the other one. Rich to lean sensor switch time, 34 out of 120. And lean to rich sensor switch time, 27 out of 120. That's good. Now test ID 91, our test value was 70 out of 425. So this is pretty much the difference between bank one sensor one, we, we had a negative value. This is a positive 70 out of 425. And finally, test ID 92. We have a value of positive 354 out of 400. On the other sensor, we had a negative value. So perhaps this is, you know, this is giving us, you know, some type of clue. So this test value is almost to its max value of 400. It still passed, but it was close to that 400 max. So I'm thinking this sensor might be act, uh, acting lazy at moments. It's not fully bad yet. Let me go to live data now. I've already selected the PID, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. 
So I'm currently showing RPM, bank one sensor one, and bank two sensor one, upstream, upstream all two sensors. So remember our key point here that this code was set under load at 1350 close to 400 RPMs. So that's where we want to try to raise our RPMs to see how this bank two sensor one is acting. I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So far under load, I mean under idle, this bank two sensor one signal is pretty much showing good. It's going from rich to lean compared to bank one sensor one. So remember, our fault happened under load. So I'm going to try to increase the RPMs to 1350, 1400 RPMs to see how this downstream, I mean, bank two sensor one is uh, actually acts up under load so here we go try to reach it 1350 sometimes with under with these vehicles that have the drive by wire sometimes it's hard to keep a steady rpm there we go so around 1100 it's not too bad So our key factor here is that you know we want to concentrate on this on the signal or on the on the waveform. If it's staying too much on the lean side compared to the rich side, so far it does seem to stay more on the lean than rich. Perhaps it is lazy. Thirteen hundred. Fourteen. Bank one sensor one does show that it's as a quicker switch rate compared to bank two sensor one. Like I said, it seem it does seem to stay more on the lean side or uh, take more longer to go from lean to rich. So I'll keep, uh, so I'm thinking that, that this vehicle will need. A new bank two sensor one upstream O2 sensor. Like right now, it does seem to be switching much quicker now from lean to rich. So, at moments, this vehicle, I mean, this sensor does tend to work properly, and at moments, it does tend to be more lazy or have a, more, uh, a delay response from lean to rich. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to give you a fix. It all depends whether the customer wants me to replace the O2 sensor on bank 2 sensor 1. He just brought it in to get it diagnosed. But I'm thinking that to, uh, to fix this P015D, it's pretty much uh, you know replace the the upstream O2 sensor or bank two. It's under under idle. Seems that under idle the sensor does seem to be working properly. If you compare to bank one sensor one. But under load is it as I showed before, here we go again. It does have it does seem to have a the delay from lean to rich
so I'm about 350 RPMs pretty much where it happened see how the bank 2 sensor one does seem to be more on the lean side all right I think this is enough data to pr pretty much conclude that this bank 2 sensor one upstream O2 sensor seems to be lazy or have that delay response under that certain RPM range all right guys so maybe stay tuned for maybe part two I'm not sure it all depends on the customer whether he wants me to replace it or if he does it his own uh, his own self I'm not sure but this is pretty much you know uh, how I go about checking this type of code all right guys so this is Eli the OBD tech subscribe if you like mm -hmm.